Rick and Morty have a very interesting psychological relationship, and after binge-watching the first two seasons, I knew that we just had to analyze them. Psychology is very interesting, and their character development also teaches us a very valuable lesson in life, one that I hope you will see after watching this analysis. But first, I assume that since you clicked this video, you are a fan of Rick and Morty, right? And that's why I'd like to show you today's sponsor, whose support of this channel lets me make all these videos for you. Here is a brand new app called Quid. It's a new take on digital trading card and sticker collecting, even digital Funko Pops, all right on your phone. From numerous series like Rick and Morty, Bob's Burgers, FNAF, Firefly, Family Guy, Adventure Time, and yes, even Garfield. You can build and showcase your collection and trade with others, and use the stickers as unique emojis in multiple messengers like iMessage and Facebook. And they are continuously adding new stickers, cards, and figures that you can collect every day and for free. It's a fun way to geek out and express yourself with the franchises you love. And you can check it out with the link at the top of the description. Rick Sanchez is a 60-year-old mad scientist. Known for his inventive, though often unpleasant and morally ambiguous personality, Rick is often found traveling to different universes and dimensions to further his scientific studies. Though, questionable morals have led him to being convicted of, well, everything. He has been known to do the right thing on occasion, but mostly remains a chaotic personality. While we don't know much about Rick's past, what we do know is that he was an absentee father for most of Beth's life. He has been traveling dimensions since at least his college days, and at some point in Rick's life, he knew Morty as an infant. Rick is a complicated mess of many disorders and issues, and it's hard to pinpoint exactly which mental issue he may have. We've seen him suffer from depression, alcoholism, and general psychopathy. He also has a pessimistic, if not nihilistic, worldview. Let's take a look at his supposed depression first. As we discussed in the Psychology of Sands video, the symptoms of depression are as follows. Fatigue or loss of energy almost every day, feelings of worthlessness or guilt almost every day, impaired concentration, indecisiveness, insomnia or hypersomnia, markedly diminished interest or pleasure in almost all activities nearly every day, restlessness or feeling slowed down, recurring thoughts of death or suicide, and significant weight loss or gain. While Rick doesn't seem to exhibit as many of these symptoms as Sands did, we can link his behavior to a few such as his feelings of anger, even over small matters, his disinterest in anything but cold, hard science, and his attempted suicide in the episode Auto-Erotic Assimilation. Rick chooses, much like real-world sufferers, to hide his pain. And even through his catchphrase in Season 1, Wubba Lubba Dub Dub, Wubba Lubba Dub Dub! <laughs> Wubba Lubba Dub Dub! Wubba Lubba Dub Dub! Wubba Lubba Dub Dub! He coats the real message with an excited and cheerful tone. It's revealed in the season one finale that Wubba Lubba Dub Dub means, I am in great pain, please help me, in his best friend Bird Person's native language. In my people's tongue, it means, I am in great pain. Please help me. Rick is a genius and has seen many horrible things in his life through his adventures, and he chooses to use drugs and alcohol to numb himself from getting too attached to a world he views as ultimately doomed. His substance abuse and alcoholism is an extension of his depression. This is a common practice amongst people who suffer from depression, and it can in turn make the depression much worse. This also plays into his nihilistic worldview. Evidence supporting this comes from how easily he picks up and leaves from realities. Now talking about Rick's psychopathy, we can dig a bit deeper into his character. In case you're unfamiliar, psychopathy has some of the following symptoms. Superficial charm, an inflated sense of self-worth, constant need for stimulation, lying pathologically, conning others, being manipulative, having shallow emotions, callousness, lack of empathy, poor control over behavior, promiscuous sexual behavior, behavioral problems early in life, lack of realistic long-term goals, being impulsive, being irresponsible, blaming others and refusing to accept responsibility, and criminal acts. And now, if we break down what we know of Rick, we can see nearly all of these symptoms. Rick has been known to be charming, at least from what we know of him in social situations. He does tend to have everyone on his side. Rick also exhibits an arrogant personality, saying things like, you know that Whatever you're asking, the answer is I'm amazing. Rick lies, often usually to further his own end goal. I mean, he's manipulated an entire race of aliens into blowing themselves up. Though shown to care about Morty at times, 
he's not known to care about anything or anyone else's well-being. Except for maybe Beth and Summer. On the subject of promiscuous behavior, he got with a hive-minded planet of people, and in order to get things right... We need a hang glider, and a crotchless Uncle Sam costume, and I want the entire field of your largest stadium covered end-to-end -end with naked redheads, and I want the stands packed with every man that remotely resembles my father. So, yeah, you certainly could argue that he is some kind of promiscuous. And clearly, he does have plenty of unrealistic end goals, but since he's a genius, and since it's a cartoon, he is able to make these goals a reality. The last few symptoms of being impulsive, being irresponsible, blaming others, and criminal acts are present in almost every episode of the series. This, in terms of Rick's character design, is a technique used to make his humanity shine through when we happen to get glimpses of it. In the episode Close Rick Counters of the Rick Kind, which introduces the Council of Ricks, we get the most human response from Rick we've ever seen. Rick cries over the thought of losing Morty when having his brain downloaded by evil Rick. So while Rick is nearing the level of the Joker in terms of psychopathy, even to the point where he does seem to break the fourth wall... Morty, that's my series arc, Morty! Hell? If it takes nine seasons, I want my McNugget tipping sauce... He has a few human tethers to keep his humanity more grounded. Such as Morty. Morty is Rick's 14-year-old grandson, who often appears anxious and sometimes unwarrantedly aggressive. For much of this Morty's life, Rick was absent just like he was absent in Beth's life. During the whole of Morty's life, his parents have been reluctantly staying together for the sake of the kids. Which, of course, causes them to constantly have arguments. This kind of child development is very common in these kinds of households, at least according to the findings put forth by the journal Development and Psychopathology. While Morty isn't a person who constantly has violent outbursts, he does exhibit them from time to time, and is known to be more sensitive than the typical person. Morty also has a fairly pronounced stutter. Stutters can be indicators of anxiety and stress. A contributing factor to Morty's anxiety are also the adventures Rick drags him on. For example, in one episode, Morty was the victim of attempted sexual assault, which is shown to cause him some sort of trauma, as it would anyone in the same situation. He was made to bury his own body at one point, and even been made to kill a friend for the greater good. All sorts of traumatic events. Oftentimes, Rick doesn't care what danger Morty is in. As stated before, Rick has shown some worry and care for Morty, as evidenced by the sacrifice made by 164th of Rick's split timelines when he gave Morty his collar. However, even from the intro of the series, we see Rick leave a Morty behind. Morty has been with Rick through drunken stupors, and even while a drunken Rick is driving his ship, Morty also regresses his frustrations with the way his grandfather does things. This eventually leads to Morty having a violent outburst in the episode, Look Who's Purging Now where Morty murders people during a purge event. Morty is an impressionable young teen, and we can see a bit of Rick come out in him from time to time. You know, outside the fact that they're voiced by the same person. This has caused tension between him and his dad, Jerry, who wants Morty to be a normal kid. And this furthers a tension with Jerry and Beth, because Beth wants her father in her family's life. It's a cycle that ends up frustrating Morty even more. At the same time, we see Morty developing the same worldview that Rick has. It shows itself in Rick's Team Minutes when Morty says, Well, Summer, maybe people that create things aren't concerned with your delicate sensibilities, you know? M maybe the species that communicate with each other through the filter of your comfort are less evolved than the ones that just communicate. Maybe your problems are your own to deal with, and maybe the public giving a shit about your feelings is a one-way ticket to extinction! Though he says this in a much more inspirational context, it still echoes Rick's nihilistic view. While Rick and Morty are family, they have more of a friendship than what you would see in most relationships as theirs. It's hard to pinpoint, but you could argue that they have a symbiosis psychologically. Physically, we know that's the case, since Mortys are considered camouflage by Ricks. In the sense of their psychological relationship, there are arguments that are detrimental to Morty. But on the other side, Morty has shown some increase in confidence because of it. So perhaps, while the relationship we see is making Morty uncomfortable in the short term, Rick is preparing him for the real world, and making him braver by making him face his fears. While at the same time, Rick does use his berating to keep Morty humble, because as he says, A cocky Morty can lead to some big problems. So it can still be argued that this relationship is still out of Rick's own needs.
Rick and Morty are a very big gray area of moral and psychological concepts, but that's part of the charm. And while we see Rick represent the worst of humanity at times, he also represents the best on occasion, mostly due to Morty's sense of reason. Morty is stuck in the middle. He has more humanity than Rick, but often gets pushed to the side by Rick. Morty is the innocence that Rick no longer has, while Rick represents the cynical worldview attributed to adulthood. While they are, in a sense, opposites, what Rick and Morty represent as a duo is the ability to balance each other and not become someone who is completely naive or someone who just sees no good in the world. Much like the relationship of Rick and Morty, the challenge of us as humans is to balance our innocence with our cynicism. To be prepared for the real world and life as adults, but not completely lose our humanity we naturally have as children. Life is a balance, and balance is beautiful. Thank you so much for watching, and if you liked this video and want more videos about psychology, or even just about cartoons, then let me know down below. And please remember to check out Quid using the link at the top of the description. And until next time, never stop using your noggin.